<laughs> okay, so uh, we basically built a dino game inspired by uh, the one that we've seen on the internet where uh, on Chrome, if basically we don't have internet, it helps us kill time. So that was the inspiration and we thought it was a good enough game to be implemented on a on a big microcontroller. So uh, we started off uh, with uh, the same hardware that we've been using in the lab. And uh, the functionalities that we've used is basically pretty much all of it because we're using audio input, we're using audio output, uh, we're using the display functionality, the TFT, and uh, so yeah, except for the servos, we've used pretty much everything that we've used through labs one, two, three, or, or just the servos in the fourth are not being used. And so we have also implemented DMA uh, for sound. So that's additional feature. Yeah. So I, I think the last two channels were left over. And so we use those two channels for two sounds uh, for DMA. So two different types of sounds. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, do we need to? Yeah. Should we talk about the hardware architecture or? Yeah. Uh, Maybe just a little bit. Yeah. Sort of how, okay. how things are, how yeah, the communication so with the user works, that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're use, we haven't changed anything on the architecture side. So uh, we have, uh, I think, the TFT screen, uh, which is connected using SPI. And then we have uh, the DAC, which is external to the uh, controller, uh, which is also on SPI. And then uh, we have uh, an inbuilt ADC for the sound input. And uh, yeah, these are basically our uh, peripherals, uh, pretty much. And we haven't changed uh, yeah. the outputs. The only thing that we had to change was use the pin, the pin for yeah. SPI. The pin RPA3 because uh, pin RPB10 was already being used. Awesome. Okay. And then, of course, the serial interface to Python on the lab PC. Yes. Yeah, okay. that, the, the serial, serial interface. To Python. Okay, cool. On the software side, we are using pretty much the same things. Uh, we are yeah. using proto threads to schedule three different threads. One will be serial um, to communicate with the GUI. The other is the button proto thread, which keeps a track on what button has been pushed. And the animation proto thread, which sort of runs everything uh, from animation to control of voice. And we are also using software interrupts on timer two, mm -hmm. uh, which are being called at uh, up at every, I mean, I, I think, yeah, it's at four kilohertz, uh, so that we can get our sounds in the range of zero to two kilohertz. Yeah. For the but, sound input. Yeah. Because we verified that, uh, our whistle sound will range from 1500 to 1800 Hertz. So to, uh, to just keep some margin, um, we, we took about two kilohertz and we don't want to go very high because the, the faster the interrupt triggers, the more CPU cycles it will use. And uh, for DMA, we are uh, we are using a constant bitrate of eight kilohertz. So that we have also initialized timer three to yeah. uh, to pace the DMA at eight kilohertz because uh, we reduce the bitrate of our sound to preserve uh, memory. And I don't think we observed any uh, drastic uh, yeah a drastic change. We did that using MATLAB and we compared the sounds and we didn't really see much degradation because with the sounds we're using are pretty pretty simple yeah those are those retro 8-bit sounds for mario game okay so cool they don't require much quality also so, so can, can you uh show a demonstration sure so uh for the uh, like uh, there are two different controls uh there's the gui control uh, and when the dino dies we have to use the restart button awesome. and there's also sound control where we can whistle to jump. There's some issue with timing because of Zoom. So. Sure, yeah. That, that's it's a very difficult to play. <laughs> and I also, you're also maintaining uh, a measurement of high score between re, uh, game restarts. So okay, we restart, we restart uh, yeah, uh, and we can see that the high score is still five. 
Gotcha. And you're you're using uh, looks like you're using bitmaps of the actual images from the Dino game. Right, we are. Yeah. And in order to do that, we also had to uh, optimize the inbuilt bitmap function. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the bitmap function that was provided with the TFT library was pretty unoptimized. It was drawing individual pixels, which was uh, pretty slow because for ev drawing every pixel, what you have to do is you have to uh, set the address, the row and address column address and individually. But uh, I dug deep and I found that the draw of the fill rectangle is pretty optimized because what it does is it sets the address window first and then it just sends the color, sends the color individually. So that doesn't need to set the address for every pixel. So the big, the larger our image, the more optimization uh, yeah, we will gain. The more that. optimization we'll be able to see. Gotcha. And and I can see too that you appear to have two bitmaps of the dyno so that you swap between to make it look like he's uh, running. We actually, have three. Yeah. Three. Okay. Uh, one for like two for the legs and one for the jump. For the jump, okay. the legs are sort of. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. And also, we are using three different bitmaps for the cac cacti. Like there's a so, small cactus, the large cactus, and there there's, there are four a, group of four cactuses. Like a shrub bunch. Yeah. And what's the animation rate that you're running here? Uh, we are running at 30 fps. We were printing we out on the serial monitor, but uh, I think it, it needs to be restarted. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Looks, looks, it's, it's extremely recognizable as the dino game. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's perfect. Yeah. Really cool. After the explanation, could you play it one more time so I can watch the bitmaps? So the do I interpret right that the cactus and the and the dino are both made of rectangles? Then, yeah, the the, the hit boxes are rectangles. Uh huh. And then each each pixel is either either colored or not colored. So so we use we just created a new function for drawing those. Cool. It's a combination of the draw rectangle and the draw bitmap function sort of like we hybridized a hybrid function of those two yeah awesome very nice <laughs>